Okay, I want to make a quick video on memes and trends and how memes are the things that control us and the trends, uh, especially how trends were more contrived. Uh, sort of like the 70s, you have bell bottoms and you have things like that. And you have uh, you know, these trends that you notice and pick up, especially nowadays. Uh, you know, you got the uh, whole sagging pants, backwards hat kind of thing going on. And these memes that control us, meme evolution, how that's the only thing that's controlling us. Our intelligence is the only thing that's, at this point, having any effect, having any, ev any evolution that's progressing us. Obviously, technological evolution, the industrial revolution, and things like that are the things that are controlling us and moving us forward, as opposed to physical evolution. But we can impose that physical evolution um, by um, recognizing this technological, using these technologies to improve our existence by improving our bodies and things like that and mitigating against kinds of diseases and we're almost taking away the need for the negative the build up the evolution physically of dying and reproducing and dying reproducing reproducing and dying reproducing and dying and we're taking away that but in the meantime we're, we're when we're talking about like fixing um fixing illnesses and things like that it's obviously we're fixing illnesses but we're, we're, we fix certain illnesses, but we can have fixed so much more if we just let, you know, the few, the, the people that are sick of it, we're wasting time on medicine and treatments and things like that. You're not, you're not, you're not, you know, why haven't we cured cancer yet? Obviously, we can't necessarily say if it would have been a hard or easy thing, but we can have obviously mitigated, we can have eliminated so much more by completely destroying these. And I think the earlier we started, the more we can have uh, come to terms with this, as opposed to starting so late now that we're we're in a very um, we're in a society where we expect to have the uh, we expect to uh, you know protect people as much as we can. But at this point, we can't protect. We want to find cures, but we can't because we're spending too much on protecting people, treating people, and then that's getting in the way from the cures. Obviously, we can spend more money on curenesses. Um, cures, and then we we could spend less money on treatments. But obviously, in the meantime, we'd have a bunch of people dying. But the treatments that we're doing, that we're imposing on these people, are is only extending the death of these people. Uh, sort of like putting a heart transplants, any kind of transplant, anything like that. Um, you're just extending the heart transplant lasts how much? 10, 15 years, and then you got to get another one. It extended your life, and you're going to have problems from the day that you had the heart transplant to the day you die. So you're just extending someone's suffering when you do that. Um, so it's best just to find cures and completely eliminate these things. Not necessarily find the infinite life pill, obviously that would have all sorts of negative uh, social uh, implications unless we started saying absolutely overt non-reproduction for anyone that decides to take that pill. And obviously you can look at it from all four different points of view and different... Uh, levels of, um, you know, imposing this kind of rule on someone. So, um, we should spend more on cures. Obviously, we're extending life with these treatments, but we're extending the suffering a person is experiencing. We're treating their illness, extending their life, but not eliminating the illness, but sometimes with an expectation of hopefully this treatment can help mitigate it and help it go away, but obviously that's a rare example. So, um, um, we should... Spend more money, at least more money on cures and less money on treatments. Put more money towards these cures so we can fit. And that's obviously a treatment, uh, a trend now is in these memes is, is extending life, but we don't realize what we're doing by extending this life. We're extending their suffering, and that's all we're doing. Um, so um, I, back to the main idea I want to get on is uh, trends and memes. Obviously, this that was a meme that I was uh, giving an example of. Um, and all we're doing is um, letting memes control us, meme evolution, things like the internet, things that happen on the internet, things that people say, these ideas. Ideas are the things that are changing now, and the ideas are the things that control us. An idea has us as opposed to us having an idea. An idea grabs our attention. These pre-existing things, sort of like an, we understand a number as opposed to a uh, number... Um, understanding us, the number exists, the idea exists, it's based on something in reality, and the, we ha end up interacting with it and be consumed by that idea. So that's all we're doing, is be consumed by memes and ideas and trends, and trends uh, start off, and usually can be more contrived based on like social trends, like dressing and things like that, the evolution of trends, or like how the evolution of 
clothing style and hairstyle and all sorts of things have changed over time. Um, but like, um, and another point I want to make is no matter how the picture looks, it could be black and white. We can recreate that today. We can recreate something that looks like it's from the 1900s based on the cameras. We have that technology to recreate that. Uh, and that's a meme that's running around old fashioned 1920s dress wear and things like that. Um, and, you know, and the saggy pants and the backwards hat and all that, and the dude and the bro and all that crap, and the bro, cu bro culture, the, you know, whole idea of something like that. Um, but we can recreate those things now, like we can rec recreate old 1920s, you know, or 19, eight, 1900 videos and memes like that, and we can recreate those things because we have the technology to recreate those things. And no matter how old the person looks, if you're looking at a video, they were living an experience just as strong and just as aware of the experience that you're experiencing now, assuming that you're aware of yourself and you're experiencing life. Ah, my throat's getting dried out and it hurts right now. So you're experiencing that no matter what. Very sore from talking too much. Um, so you're experiencing that no matter what, and no matter how old the person looks, they were doing the exact same thing. You just change the background a little bit, the clothing and the circumstances and the meme evolution around the time. The thing, and that's the thing. It's the meme evolution that controls everything. That's more the difference. That if you're looking back in an old photo, the dressing and all that stuff is obviously a difference. But these ideas that are difference. The 1920s and prohibition. Now the war on drugs and things like that. Obviously, there's a more relevant issue. There are different memes, and that's the thing that when you look back is the consideration you should make when looking back and understanding trends and ideas and the evolution of trends and ideas and how things have changed. It's more about the memes and ideas as opposed to the things that you can physically see and, and uh, almost uh, vicariously live through and recognizing this kind of um, thing. So it's less about what you see, less about through what you see it with, the pictures or whatever, your eyes, even if it is looking through pictures or something else like that. It's obviously just as real then as it was now. And um, it's mostly about the memes that you view and understand to these, uh, obviously, from what you see and from necessarily, not necessarily what you see, but based on the social implications and things that were happening at the time. So and that's just as important when considering meme and trend evolution and things like that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And until next time. Bye.